I want to show you everything you need to know about how you can get your copilot to read Microsoft Dataverse information all within Microsoft Copilot Studio really simply right now. So there are actually two different ways that I want to show in this video how you can get Dataverse information into, I guess, the hands of your copilot so that the people interacting with it can access Dataverse. One, I guess, 10 second note, Copilot completely respects any sort of security privileges that are already set on the interacting user. So you can rest assured that this is not going to trump any you know security privileges that your company has already set up. But nonetheless, here I am within Microsoft Copilot Studio, and here I am looking at my Coffee Copilot example. And let's say that in this scenario, I wanna actually be able to access the accounts table that is within Microsoft Dataverse with this Copilot. And like I said, there are two different ways to do that. And the first one is going to be through adding Dataverse tables to your knowledge base or as a knowledge source. And what this means, if you are unfamiliar, the knowledge base is really just the different pieces of information, this could be documents, this could be websites, this could be Dataverse tables, this could be PDFs, like all of the things that you want your copilot to have information to in order to formulate its generative AI answers, if that makes sense. And so you actually wanna go ahead and select add knowledge up here and you will see there is this new preview feature called Dataverse. And in here, you're going to be able to select which Dataverse tables you want your copilot to be able to access. I don't necessarily know, oh, let's. it says right here, select up to 15 tables. So you can select um, multiple tables here. In my example, I'm just going to select the account table. After that, it is going to show a little preview of t the top 20 records, and it's gonna show the first 20 columns alphabetically. So here in my example, it's just showing a bunch of address information because it's all of the, the fields that start with the letter A. But this is just a preview. It is going to pull in all of the fields, all of the data of all of the records on the account table is going to be accessible by this knowledge source. And so nonetheless, after this preview, I can hit next. And here you can set the knowledge name. This is gonna be what shows kind of here in the list. And then you can also set up what's called a knowledge description. And I wanna take a second just to explain this because I think it's really important and maybe not that intuitive. And that is that, you know, we are gonna be leaning on generative AI to you know, work with and talk to the different people that are interacting with the copilot. And what this knowledge description does is this just gives additional context to the copilot about what this knowledge source does. And there is one already in here for us. You know, I don't think this is bad by any means, but just something to think about is people that are interacting with copilot do they use the term account? They might not use the term account. They might use the term companies or businesses or organizations. And um, these are gonna be great things to add to kind of this synonyms list or even this glossary list. Maybe I'm behind the ball here, but I was not familiar with, with glossaries and their difference between them and synonyms, but these are domain specific terms and acronyms. So I think about if you have, you know, industry specific names for accounts. Like maybe you're a certain organization that works with brokers and broker agencies in some capacity, and those are stored as accounts in your system. Likely adding the term broker or broker agency might be valuable here. If you have any experience with glossaries, let me know down in the comments down below. I would love to hear um, kind of your takeaways from that. But nonetheless, once you have these set up, you can go ahead and select add. And this will take just a couple of seconds here. Shouldn't take long. I see it adding it over here. And now we have our knowledge source is ready to go. And now if I go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh kind of this testing. Let me flip myself to the other side so you can see my, my test panel here. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask Copilot some information about a specific account that I know is in our system.
So here I'm just saying, hey, you know, I, hey, Coffee Copilot, I am a coffee salesman that is working to, I'm gonna begin working with this certain company that's in our system next week. Can you just give me some information or maybe a primary contact of the people that I should reach out to? When I send this, it's actually gonna take us to what's called the activity or the conversation map and just kind of show you what the Copilot is thinking and where it's going to get its information. And here we can see that it checked our knowledge sources and it found an output from our Dataverse knowledge source, the account table. And here it says, hey, this company is located in Dallas. The primary contact for the company is this person and their number is this. If you need any more specific information or assistance, feel free to ask. And then I could ask maybe some follow-up questions like, have we worked with this company in the past? Here we see our activity map is working once again, searching those knowledge sources, and specifically in the Dataverse. And you'll notice that it says no results found up here. And the reason why is because Information that I potentially looked for in this follow-up question might not actually be stored on the account table, but might be stored on, say, the orders table or the opportunities table, or maybe the cases table, if I'm wanting to know if they have any open cases. So really thinking about all of the different tables, how your data is structured, and thinking about all of the different tables that you might want your co-pilot to be able to, to provide answers for. And so, Nonetheless, I think this is really sweet and something that is like fairly simple to set up, right? Like it's not super complex. Now, the other method I wanted to show is, and this was kind of the original thought that I had behind this video before showing this preview feature, and that is going to be utilizing Power Automate. And so there are simple ways to connect Power Automate flows to your Copilot and trigger those Power Automate flows accordingly and pass inputs and outputs back and forth. And that is not what we are talking about in this video. If you want to see how that works, follow this linked video here. But nonetheless, here is my new account research topic. And I just want to kind of talk through and show you the different things that I have started to set up here. And so specifically, what we're looking for here is this action, this power automate, call and power automate flow action. You can get here by just going to add an action and finding a power automate flow or creating a new one. And you can actually see that it outlines kind of the different inputs of this power automate flow. Let me jump over here to a different tab. Like I said, really simple flow, just as an example. But here in this kind of run a flow from Copilot, the trigger, I can outline the different inputs that this Power Automate needs. And so say for my example, I wanna gain the account name, the account number, and what sort of information they want. Like, do they want address information? Do they want order history? Do they want um, uh, you know, the primary contact? What sort of things do they want? One pro tip, you can make these fields optional here. So by checking or unchecking this will mean, you see this little red asterisk right here? That means that you can require or unrequire those sort of inputs in order for the topic, or in order for the Power Automate flow to run. Nonetheless, you can select the different inputs that you need, the variables that you're gaining, either throughout other conversation topics or this one, adding those in here or creating topic inputs. I guess this is a great time to mention if you have if you feel like I'm not answering all of your questions or have a really specific nuanced scenario that you need help on, be sure to follow the first link in the description down below. That's going to allow you to get into direct contact with me. We could set up some coaching sessions or a single coaching session. I'm really passionate about learning more about Microsoft Copilot Studio and helping others learn as well. So I would love to get in touch with you one-on-one -on -one contact so that we can both continue to learn something together. But nonetheless, you know, let your imagination run wild here of how you want to gather Power Automate information and then in your Power Automate flow, then connecting to Dataverse that way. So it's another just kind of simpler way to do it, but those are kind of the two different, I guess, 
things to talk about and ways to connect your copilot to Microsoft Dataverse. If you found something like this insightful, I wanna tell you there is actually a really cool way and really simple way to add SharePoint documents or even SharePoint libraries to your Copilot's knowledge base. And if you wanna know how to do that, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video here. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. If you wanna come hang out with me on Wednesdays, we have the Power Talks podcast, where I'm inviting other Microsoft MVPs and experts in the space to come hang out and talk to me and pick their brain. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfelt. I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.